Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ Allah says that we sent Musa with our signs to bring your people out of darkness and into the light and remind them of the days of Allah. Indeed, in that are signs for everyone who is patient and grateful. Part of the obligation of the prophets and the messengers is to remind the people of the days of Allah, meaning the days in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent His blessings and His grace to humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees there are certain days in the calendar in which His blessings are greater, His mercy is greater. And this is to the benefit of the believer to break the monotony in their life. To break the habit that we have of falling into habits so much so that we forget our Creator. To allow us to disconnect a little bit from the dunya that surrounds us, the fakeness around us, and to the reality of subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us. In a few days, we are going to enter into the powerful days of Dhul Hijjah. And these are days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references throughout the Quran in many different verses. He swears by these days when he says, Wal Fajr, Walayalin Ashr, by the dawn and by the ten nights. And this is a reference, according to all the scholars, to the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions, Wa wa'adna Musa, thalafina laylan wa atmamnaha bi ashr. That we promised Musa an appointment of 30 days and then we increased it by 10. And the scholars say that this is again a reference to the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references these days as well when He speaks in the verses of Hajj. Min behimat al anam that Allah subhanahu wa taala says that they may witness the benefits and that they may remember Allah in the days that are appointed and these are the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. So Allah constantly references in the Quran these ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us, ما من عمل أو ما من أيام العمل الصالح أحب إلى الله من هذه العشر. The Prophet said, there are no days in the year in which the good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than during these 10 days. Now sometimes the average Muslim when he hears this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying that there are no days of the year in which the good deeds are better than during the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they start to ask, what about Ramadan? And they might wonder to themselves, why is it that we give so much of our attention to Ramadan and not very much attention to the 10 days of the Hijjah? To the extent that there may be Muslims who are not even aware of these 10 days, except when the day of Eid comes forward. And yet our Prophet ﷺ says in many different hadith, أَفْضَلُ أَيَّامِ الدُّنْيَا أَيَّامِ الْعَشْرِ he said, the best days of this world, of this dunya, of this year, is the 10 days of the Hijjah. Part of this is a general ignorance of our religion. That we have so much ignorance of our religion to the point that many of us don't even know the most important days in our calendar. And we don't know the Quranic references to them. But part of it also is a sign of the weakness of Iman. Why do I, what do I mean by this? This weakness is shown in the fact that sometimes we rely too much on the people around us. 
In Ramadan, much of our ibadah is communal. We worship Allah together. Even though we fast individually, we take suhoor together. We break our fast together. We stand in tarawih and in tahajjud together. So we are strengthened by others. And it's as if in Dhul Hijjah, you know, in Dhul Hijjah, the best ibadah for you to do is individual. The best ibadah is dua and dhikr and fasting. And even though fasting is far, isn't fard during Dhul Hijjah. So these are not necessarily communal ibadat, but individual ibadah. And it's as if Ramadan strengthens you, and now Dhul Hijjah is asking you, what did you learn from, from Ramadan? What are you able to take as an individual to move forward in these days of Dhul Hijjah? This season of Dhul Hijjah requires your sincerity. In Ramadan, sometimes you just follow the crowd. The crowd is going to the masjid, so you go to the masjid with them. The crowd is fasting, so you fast with them. In Dhul Hijjah now, the question of sincerity comes. What are you individually going to do? What is your ibadah going to look like? What is your wird going to look like? What kind of dhikr are you doing in your life? What schedule are you implementing in your daily life? And so our religion, it promotes communal worship, salah and jama'ah, many things in our religion, encourages us to be in community, to be with others, but there's also an emphasis on individual worship. Because each of them have their benefits. And the Muslim has to be engaged in both. When the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the categories of people who will receive the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day when there is no shade except the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet ﷺ mentions to us different examples in these seven categories. But you look at these categories and you find amongst them رَجُلْ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقْ بِالْمَسْجِدْ A man whose heart is attached to the masjid. This requires sincerity. That the person's heart is longing for the masjid and to be there. And you find another category. رَجُلْ تَصَدَّقْ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمُ يَمِينَهُ مَا تُنْفِقْ شِبَالًا That the man who gives so much to the, in secret to the point that his right hand does not know how much the left hand has given. Which means he gives so much, but he gives quietly, nobody knows. Again, sincerity. And he gives us another example. وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَا A person who remembers Allah in seclusion until he sheds tears. And so this shows us the importance of sincerity. The three of these categories are connected to this idea of sincerity. And again, the question is, as we enter into these days of Dhul Hijjah, what are we sincerely going to bring forward? It's not about everybody else is doing it and we're doing it with them. No, you have to decide in your daily life how important these days are to you. How important you want to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That tests the sincerity of the person. And the sincerity is the most important thing that the person has to be able to achieve. We know the hadith of our Prophet ﷺ, of a woman who was a prostitute. And she gives water to the dog who is thirsty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives her sins. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he talks about this hadith and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave this woman because of the intensity of her sincerity. There was no one around her. There's no one seeing what she's going to do. But she sincerely did this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the strength of her sincerity allowed Allah to wipe out all of her sins. This is something for us to reflect upon. We know the hadith of our Prophet 
when he tells us the first of the people who will enter the hellfire. It's not the adulterer. It's not the murderer. It's not the person who's drunk. It's not the person abusive to their parents. No, he tells us the first people to enter the hellfire is the reciter of the Qur'an. Is the one who gives charity. Is the one who fought in battles for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fought in battles. Yet, he mentions these were not done for the sake of Allah azza wa ta'ala. They were intended for someone else. And so Allah will tell them, you got what you wanted. You wanted people's adoration, you already received it. So today you get nothing. And they're taken into the hellfire. This is a powerful hadith for us to think about. Ramadan prepared you for these days. And for you to go into these days and ask yourself, what is the deed that you've done? that you can say has been sincere for the sake of Allah And if you have this sincerity, then these 10 days will be days of dua and dhikr of Allah These will be days where you are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ عَمَلٍ أَسْكَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ He said, there is no deed that is eska, pure, literally pure. There's no other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is intended in it. There are no deeds more pure in the sight of Allah, wala a'zamu ajra, nor greater in its reward, min khayrin ya'amaluhu fi ashran adha, than the good deeds that are done in the ten of Dhul Hijjah. They said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala jihadu fi sabilillah, not even fighting for the sake of Allah, he said, not even jihad for the sake of Allah. Illa rajulun kharaja bimalihi. وَنَفْسِهِ فَلَمْ يَرْجَعْ مِنْهُمْ بِشَيْءٍ he said, he said, except the person who leaves with their life and all of their wealth and they return back with nothing. That's the level of sacrifice and sincerity that equals the ibadah that a person sincerely does in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Another hadith of our Prophet ﷺ, just for us to understand the previous hadith, a person asked the Prophet ﷺ, tell me something equal to jihad. And the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ لَا أَجِدْ He said, I don't see anything like it. He said, can you, then the Prophet ﷺ said, is it possible for when the person goes to fight for the sake of Allah, you stand in the masjid, and you pray, and you fast simultaneously, and you do not break your fast until he returns back from his battle? Can you do this? A battle may take by the time they travel in the past to go to their place and fight and the battle is over and they return. It may take months and months and months. He said, can you stand in the masjid fasting and praying? The entire time the person has gone? The man said, no. This is the power of fighting for the sake of Allah Azza The reward of it in our religion. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only here says, only here says there is nothing equal to the good deeds that are done in the 10 days of the Hijjah. Even jihad is less than it. And our Prophet ﷺ in another hadith was asked, is there anything better than the 10 days of the Hijjah? They asked him, even fighting for the sake of Allah جل, he said, nothing is equal to it. Unless somebody fights until their face is covered in dirt. And what he means by that is somebody goes and fights until he dies gives their life for the sake of Allah All of these ahadith are to tell us what? The importance and the power of these 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah that so many people are heedless about. The importance of the sincerity of it. Somebody who goes and fights for the sake of Allah, giving up all of their wealth, even their life, they give it for the sake of Allah. That's somebody who is being sincere for Allah They're truly intending Allah and so if you have that sincerity in your ibadah, in your dhikr, in your dua, in your turning to Allah in these 10 days of the hijjah, this is even greater than fighting for the sake of Allah Azzawajal. Ibn Rajab, he says, these 10 days of the hijjah are the most sacred. And they are the only time of the year in which the greatest forms of ibadah can be achieved. Meaning there's no other time in the year where a person can pray and fast and if they wanted to give zakah, they could give zakah and charity. And they can perform the rituals of hajj. 
He said this is the only time of the year in which a person could and where all the ibadat can be done during the entire calendar. And so this is what makes it the greatest of all the days. And because of this, the Prophet ﷺ and the companions used to exert themselves in these days and invest their effort in these days. And the scholars mention many different forms of ibadah that we can do during these 10 days of the Hijjah. Amongst them, our Prophet ﷺ said, خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة. He said the best dua is the day, the dua of the day of عرفة, which is the ninth of the Hijjah. He said, وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيون من قبلي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. He said, and the best that I and the prophets before me have said, and this shows us that these ten days of the Hijjah have been observed by this ummah, but by the prophets before as well. He said, the best of what I and the prophets before me have said is La ilaha illallah. There is none with the right to be worshipped save Allah. Wahdahu, He alone. La sharika la. He has no partner. Lahu al-mulk. To him belongs the kingdom. Walahu al-hamd. And to him belongs all praise. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. And he is capable over all things. He said, this is the best of what you can say. But the best dua is the dua that is done. And so during these 10 days, and especially the day of Arafah, to repeat this, but notice the dhikr that the Prophet ﷺ mentions. This dhikr, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. It's a statement of tawheed, of sincerity. It's a reminder to yourself and a declaration to Allah that you are doing this for no one other than Allah. This is for you, O Allah, alone. There is no partner to you. And to exert yourself with this sense of sincerity during these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And as we know, Arafah is the greatest of these days. And our Prophet ﷺ said, there is no day in which shaitan is more harmed, more annoyed, more upset than the day of Arafah. Because of the magnitude of forgiveness that people are able to achieve on the day of Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرُ أَنْ يَعْتَقُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ عِبَادًا مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةً He said, there is no day in which Allah frees more people from the hellfire than the day of Arafah. Some scholars spoke about this in relation to Laylat al-Qadr. They said, which one is more? They said, the day of Arafah is the greatest. And the night of Laylat al-Qadr is also the greatest. Right? So there is no day in which more forgiveness and people being given freedom from the hellfire exists than the day of Arafah. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah looks to the people who gathers on the, gathered on the plains of Arafah and he boasts about them to the angels. And he says, Ma arada ha'ula. What did they want? He tells the angels, What did they want? It's a rhetorical question. What did they want? They want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is a day of sincerity and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about the sincerity of the Hajjaj. And they are going for Hajj, and what are they saying? لبيك اللهم لبيك. We've come only for you, O oh Allah. Now, of course, the greatest reward is for the people who are doing Hajj. But all around the world, we observe the day of Arafah. All around the world, there is forgiveness on the day of Arafah. And if we have that sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you the reward of Hajj while you're in your home. Right? We know this from many different hadith. We know when the Prophet ﷺ was traveling for a battle. And he tells the companions, there are those, مَا قَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ وَادٍ He said, you didn't pass a, a single valley, except that there were people walking with you. And they are back in Medina. They said, how is this possible? He said, nothing has kept them back except a legitimate excuse. They legitimately wanted to be with you, they couldn't be with you. So Allah will give them the reward. So even in your home, you're not able to go for Hajj, you legitimately wanted to go, you have that sincerity and you worship Allah. During these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah with that sincerity, Allah Azza wa will give you the reward as if you went for Hajj. He will give you the same reward. It doesn't mean your obligation of Hajj is over. For those who have not done Hajj, you can't say, I have the sincerity and therefore I don't have to do Hajj. No, the obligation exists, but you can receive the reward as though you've done Hajj because of the intensity of our sincerity in these days. As well, reciting Quran. These are days of dhikr. And the best dhikr is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to do extra dhikr as well on top of that is uh, great for the person to do as well. And fasting during the 10 days of the hijjah, 
The Prophet وسلم, used to fast these days. There is a hadith where Aisha says that she saw the Prophet didn't fast these days. And so there's difference of opinion because Hafsa says he fasted all the days, meaning the nine days. Now sometimes you'll read a hadith, it will say the Prophet fasted the ten days. They will call the ten days the ten days as um, a terminology. But they mean the nine days because the tenth day is, is Eid. Of course, nobody fasts on Eid. But they will still refer to it as the 10 days. Now the scholars look at this and they say, Aisha, one could have been mistaken. Maybe she didn't know the Prophet was fasting because fasting is not something you see necessarily. So that's one opinion. And so they say the Prophet fasted all nine days. Another opinion is that the Prophet fasted most of the days, but sometimes would break one of the days just so people would know it's not an obligation to fast all nine days. In either event, fasting these days is recommended because the Sahaba used to do it and the Prophet ﷺ at least used to do it most of the time, if not all, all of the time. And so we should try to fast these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And of course, the day of Arafah for those who are not performing Hajj is incredibly important to be fasted. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man saama yawma Arafah, ghufira lahu sanatun amamahu wa sanatun ba'da. Whoever fasts the day of Arafah is forgiven for him his previous sins of the previous year and the following year. And the scholars say by this, all of the minor sins are forgiven and uh, just by fasting the day. And so the person can fast the day, all their minor sins of the last year and their minor sins of the future year will be forgiven. And in that day, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness for the major sins so that the person leaves this day with none, uh, sin, none of their sins remaining. Of, these, of the benefits as well in these days is to give sadaqah for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of the salaf they used to say that the ibadah of the 10 days is the greatest and likewise the person should invest in their sadaqah in these days as it will be rewarded uh, the greatest on these days of Dhul Hijjah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who receive the reward of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of his sincere servants.